and welcome. So today I've got a lot of notes. I'm going to be doing a lot of sharing of details because what I want to do is give you the history of the cards across effect. Uh, the cards across effect, according to uh, back in the day when I spent a lot of time at the Denny and Haney, Denny Haney, uh, Denny and Lee Magic Emporium. Uh, Denny, Denny used to tell me that there are three card effects that you can do that have a, a uh, tremendous impact on the audience. The one that he did in his stage show, in all of his shows, and continued to do throughout his career was the cards across. And he also enjoyed the card stab. And uh, he also enjoyed the card stab. There are a number of magicians that have built their reputations on the card stab. Nat Lepsey comes to mind, and there's, there's a few other more contemporary, Bob Sheets. Uh, lots of guys have made their reputation on the card stab. And then there's the rising cards. And uh, so those three effects really are, are uh, classics in card magic. And if you're doing platform stage work, uh, those effects actually do work on platform and stage. I've seen Paul Daniels do the cards across and he does a tremendous job of it of course like he does with everything else he does uh, but I have I have four pages of notes here I have four pages of notes here that I like to get through and, and, and sign it, try to document this effect for you on on camera cards across it's also called the flying cards the 10 and 10 card trick passe passe cards goes by a number of different names uh, I remember calling up a magic dealer I won't say which dealer and, uh, you know, when I, I, I'm the kind of guy that I want everything that pertains to an effect that I'm interested in. By the way, uh, Daryl came out with an, a version a number of years ago. It's being remarketed lately. Um, that's brand new. I just saw that advertised. Uh, now, the effect is new. Obviously, Daryl uh, did it a long time ago. But it just goes to show you that every day... Uh, a name magician is coming out with uh, with a new effect. Now, Daryl's... Uh, so, so uh, the Daryl version is being remarketed. Let's put it that way. In 1700, it was described in an anonymous manuscript. Page 58, uh, the Piper translation. So uh, the cards across the effect was described. Now, the cards, the cards across the effect that was described in the 1700s, the 1800s, uh, isn't the same as the one that we're doing today. And, and the big difference is today, in most cases, not in every case, I mean, Bill Malone, for example, uh, Bill Malone, for example, Christopher Hannibal, they both do a version of the cards across that does not involve having a spectator select a card from among ten or from among a pack and having the selected card transfer. Uh, instead, they're very careful about counting the cards. The spectator knows they have four or five or six or however, however many it is. Both spectators know they have an even number of cards, and then a selected number transfers. So Bill Malone, Christopher Hannibal, uh, both do a version like that, and that is a lot closer aligned to the earlier versions than the more contemporary uh, version where a selected card or a thought-of card. I, I personally prefer thought-of cards across, and we'll get to that in a moment. 18, 1853, the strange subtraction in R.P.'s Einspin Karten, which means card games, published in 1853. Uh, in this particular version, a spectator held a packet of cards she counted herself and then asked how many cards she wanted to add to it. Upon recounting, that many cards were added to it. <clears throat> Good basic effect. 1853, also the multiplication of cards while in a spectator's hands by J.M. Ponson, uh, published in France in 1868. Robert Houdin, the father of modern magic, was doing this effect and describing it in a, in a publication that he, uh, he presented. In the 1890s, David Devant, David Devant was doing it. In 1903, it's described in The Modern Conjurer by C. Lang Neal. In 1910, 1910 is the first time that a thought-of card moves from one packet to another. So it's a significant year. First thought-of cards across called Thought Anticipated in Magician's Tricks and How They Were Done by Henry Hayton. 
And so there it is, the first time a thought of Cards Across is described in print. The 1920s, Stuart Judah published a version. 1928, you get the Tarbell course coming out. Tarbell devoted uh, an entire section in his course to the Cards Across theme, presenting many different types and varieties. A little bit later on, Dan Harlan does the same thing when he does uh, every, every, every lesson in the book. When he presents the Tarbell course, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. 1940s. The multiplication of cards while in someone's hand in More Card Manipulations by Gene Huger, 1941. The Tarbell Course in Magic comes out in Bound Volumes, published by Lewis Tanning. And of course, it's in Volume 4. So if you have a, a Tarbell set, take a look at Volume 4. That's where this, this trick is described. In 1948, many of you might be familiar with the Royal Road to Card Magic. Uh, there's a version of the Cards Across described in the Royal Road to Card Magic 1948. And also in 1948, The Fine Art of Magic by George Kaplan published a, book, a, a routine called The Giant Trio Flight, basically a Cards Across 1949. Uh, 30 Card Tricks in Cyclopedia of Magic by Henry Hay, 1949, Cyclopedia of Magic. Uh, now I'm giving you this history, not to bore you to death, but to sort of illustrate how important this effect was and has been to magicians over the years. Uh, they, they have been attracted to it for a reason. You know, when we talk about the classics of magic, and this is one, they're classic for a reason. They work, they hold up, audiences love them. Don't overlook the classics, even if you're a mentalist. Now you might be thinking, I'm a mentalist, I don't do card tricks. And I've heard uh, Lee Earl recently in, in a Penguin lecture said, don't, don't touch cards if you're a mentalist because it'll lower your fees. Um, uh, you know, I don't get good fees, so maybe he's right, but uh, I, I don't go that way. I don't go that way. And I'll, I'll tell you something, the cards across the effect presented well can be a mentalist effect. Now think about it. Here's what's happening. You count 10 cards. Spectator holds on to those 10 cards. You count another 10 cards. You ask this spectator, this spectator, not you, the spectator goes out into the audience and has three looked at and remembered, so they're thought of. They're not recorded, they're not written down, they're not said, they're not pulled out of the pack, they're just simply thought of. Spectator comes back, magic, 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 three cards vanish from there, three cards appear over here, you count them, they're, they're over there. You look in here, the cards are not there, the selected cards are over there. Now think about that a second. First of all, somehow you're identifying the selected cards. That is mentalism, okay? That's thought transference. Then you're causing the cards to vanish from this pack and reappear over here. We call that teleportation. Very few effects in magic, especially mentalism, involve teleportation. So I think even for a mentalist, this is a standout effect. <clears throat> so 1950, 30 tricks, 30 card trick in the Amateur Magician's Handbook, Henry Hay. 1953, some aspects of the fly flying cards by Peter Warlock. In the 1950s, Hen Fetch did sort of a card to wallet effect that has a cards across type of theme. He called it Wallet Wallop. He always came up with names like that for his effects. 1959, here you go, here you go, folks. Zen's Cards Across was published in My Best. Now, this is the book right here, My Best. Uh, this was the Denny Haney routine. This is the routine that Denny did. If you asked him to recommend a Cards Across effect, he would hand you this book and say, read it. Um, the Zen's Cards Across, in my opinion is quite possibly the best version ever. Now, I'm going to get into some commercially available versions. I'm going to comment on which ones I like and why I like them and so on. Uh, and there is a version out now that I think is very, very good. I think it's an improvement on Zen's. Uh, <clears throat> but as far as the cards across theme and, uh, and, and, and if you want to learn it from somewhere, you can certainly learn it from Tarbell. There are, there are, 
versions very similar to Zen's in Tarbell, but uh, grab, grab this book. It's called My Best by J.G. Thompson, published in 1959. Zen's is fully described in here, and, uh, and, and if you're going to do the effect and you do Zen's, uh, you, you'll be satisfied. I guarantee you, you'll be satisfied. In 1978, 1978, Simon, in 1978, Simon published this version called the Red Sea Passover. Um, it, it comes, if you purchase it, it comes with an instruction book and the cards uh, needed for the effect. Uh, by the way, Simon also demonstrates this on his lecture on his lecture DVD. Uh, you can pick that up and actually see him demonstrating it. Um, so I'm, I'm laughing because back here is the, is, the, is the price. It was 20 bucks. From the Denny and Lee Magic Emporium. Oh, those were the days, man. I miss those days. But uh, it's it's a nice version. I like it. So that they came out in 1978. In the 1980s, Paul Daniels was doing it on his television show, the Paul Daniels Magic Show. 1991, uh, Jim Steinmeier published a version in Device and Illusion. I, I've uh, shown you his books before in another video. In the 1990s, the World's Greatest Magic Series. Now, I don't have the DVD on me right now. In fact, I, I don't think I have the DVD version of this. I have the, the video download. Um, but if, you, if you're not familiar with the World's Greatest Magic Series, you really ought to take a look. l and Publishing. And uh, they did an entire DVD where you get, I don't know, maybe five or six professional entertainers uh, presenting their version of the cards across, and I think Bill Malone actually does his, his version on the, on the DVD. I think uh, Michael Amar probably also does his version. So uh, pick that up, really. If you haven't seen that, pick it up. I think you can download it off, off of um, Penguin Magic, or you can purchase the DVD from any Magic dealer. Uh, cards across World's Greatest Magic, uh, two thousand two. In two thousand two. This book was published. It's called Across the Void, Exploring the Cards Across Plot by Paul Hallis. Uh, it's an excellent book. It provides not the best history, but it does provide history. What it does give you is just about every conceivable version of this effect in this book. So it's, it's really, really a good book. Uh, <clears throat> Thoughts Across. Now this, this is um, David Solomon's version of the effect called Thoughts Across. It's a, it's a very, very nice version. Uh, it comes with the cards and it comes with a DVD instructional. So, uh, yeah, I, I like some of these versions that don't involve envelopes, uh, you know, and, and uh, this is certainly one and Simon's is certainly one. Uh, so, so take a look at that. They're, they're good. They're, they're very good uh, presentations. In 2007, Jay Shanky, uh, you know, he, he's got he's got his hands in everything. This guy, but he came up with his version called Astral Projection, uh, an excellent version also. Again, uh, in two, th I, I'm not sure if it was 2018, 2017, but Dan Harlan of Penguin Magic did uh, a series of instructionals based on the Tarbell course called uh, Every Every Trick in the Book. I think it's called or Every Lesson in the Book. And, uh, and Tarbell 51, so if you go to Penguin Magic's uh, website and you type in the search engine Tarbell 51, uh, you'll get uh, what he calls card teleportation. And uh, it's, a, it's three hours, three hours of demonstration and lecture on this plot alone. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's great. He, Dan Harlan introduces a version that's not in Tarbell. Uh, <clears throat> But he introduces a, a technique that is, I think, unique to card magic. So you really ought to take a look just for that purpose alone. In 2019, so that, that's just last year, folks. This is 2020 as I filmed this. 2019, this gentleman here, David Garrard, published Cards Across. And uh, this is a jumbo version. But I will tell you, I, I believe this... This is the best version on the market. It really is. Now, now, if you don't want to do the jumbo version, 
You can make it up in standard size cards. Um, but I, I really love it. I love it. Um, the Zens uses envelopes. This uses envelopes, but it's how you manage those envelopes and why are you doing it? I mean, if you present it properly, you're isolating the cards and you're sealing it and, and marking it so that there's no way it can be tampered with. So uh, I, I think the David Garrard version is the best on the market, I believe. Now, there is another version also marketed in 2019. This is the version right here. It was marketed by uh, Morgan and West. Uh, these guys, I love them. I think they're the, some of the best uh, magicians, best entertainers. They, they do, uh, they're sort of a steampunk act, uh, doing time travel type stuff. But um, thought of cards across, or, or thought of card across singular. Because what's happening here is the cards are very open. And the cards are counted very, very clearly. One card is thought of. It travels. It's very fair. It's it's very. I mean, if you want something that's bold and in your face and extremely fair, um, probably the Morgan and West version you're going to want to take a look at. So, uh, folks, uh, listen. I, I uh, that that's it. That's that's kind of my take on the cards across. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that you do. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think of the effect or maybe some other card effects that I'm not thinking of. You know, I mentioned the, the card stab. I mentioned the rising cards, the cards across. So what are your favorite card tricks? Let me know down below. What do you think are the best? What do you think are the classics in card magic? Uh, tell me about it. Also, subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.